Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I pray everyone is doing well on today. Yes, it's hot outside and cool inside. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, well, I was uh, reading some things in the scripture, and the Bible speaks of how there's going to come a day where God's going to scorch the earth. The cause, of it, the, but the, what's behind it is to have men to repent. But no matter how hot it got, they still didn't repent. I look at some of those things and I think, and I, I believe that's a day yet to come. I, I think we're just seeing a um, instance, if you will. This ain't what's coming, but it's just if people are complaining so much about this, what is it going to be like when it finally get to what God is saying? Repent now or this is it. Just saying as you look at things and I said, God, help us. Help us that our hearts have become so stubborn and so rebellious that we don't even see God anymore. Don't even care anymore. But thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Some kind of way he causes us to have victory and it's only through him. So I'm encouraged, and nevertheless, I'm looking forward to the, to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope you are, too. Amen. Wow. Yes, sir. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, bless the Lord. I'm excited today. I hope you are looking forward to the word of God. Yes, amen. Amen? amen. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. God, we ask today as we find ourselves in difficult times in the, full, in, the, in the midst of a chaotic society, Lord, in the midst of even a rebellious people, God, help us to not allow the spirit of the world to come and overtake us, but help us to be found doing those things that are pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name, amen, amen. and amen. I um, want to address something on this morning as we minister the word of God. Uh, something that I believe is, a, is to rekindle us, to reignite some things in us. Uh, upon occasion, we take a physical exam with our medical doctors. It's not that something is wrong. It's to ensure preventive maintenance. I think sometimes we need to have preventive maintenance in the things of God. Amen. Not that something is wrong but to keep us on the right track, make sure that we get the right, the, the right diet, to make sure that we're still doing the things that we need to do to stay healthy. So I'm, I'm looking in, at some things, and today I want to talk from the subject, pleasing the king. Pleasing the king. And you say, well, Pastor, what, what are you, why, why are we talking about something like this? It seems like that we live in a world that is so self-centered. People are doing what they want to do. You know, uh, this is, let, me, let me give you an analogy for a moment before I go a little deeper into it. Imagine going to a restaurant and your server brings you your food, lays everything out just like you want it. And you begin to eat and to enjoy, to drink and everything, but they never come back. They never check on you. I mean, your drink now is empty. You know, you got all these extra plates on the table. Nothing is, I mean, and you look over in the corner and you see them on their phone. Now, what is your mindset? Let, let, let me help you, since you don't want to say it out loud. You know you ain't getting no tip, okay? Because you're saying, you're here to take care of me. I'm the reason you get paid. You're supposed to be taking care. You're my server. This is your duty. How dare you become preoccupied when you should be servicing me? Oh, come on now. Is that not what we're thinking? You over there on your phone 
and my drink needs to be replenished. I need to get some of these things out. Now, some of y'all would be tempted to say something. I ain't talking about just looking at them. Some of y'all would be tempted to say something. Because after all, this is your job. It's what you were hired to do. So let's talk about pleasing the king. After all, that's what we're supposed to do. Y'all ready now? It's a shame sometimes how we just get backed into stuff, ain't it? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1. The Bible says, furthermore, then we beseech you or we beg you, brethren, and we exhort you, we warn you, we encourage you by the Lord Jesus that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God. So you would abound more and more. You learn from us, you receive from us how you ought to walk or how you ought to live and how you should please God. You know, I'm amazed that at the time that we find ourselves in, there are numerous things that are being taught and preached and so on and so forth. And I understand that there should always be a salvation message. We want people to get saved. Why we don't talk about pleasing God no more, though? I, I, I mean, okay, maybe it's just me, but it don't just seem like it's kind of changed on us getting what we want. Bless me, my four, and no more. The blessings of the Lord. But it's always for us. What happened to pleasing God? Let, let me remind you of something. Those of you all that have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I promise you, when you first met him, your desire was only to please him. That's if you met him. How is it that now it has gone from us serving to wanting to sit down and get the meal? What happened? It's like the book of Galatians that he says, oh, foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you? Who's, who's changed our mind on what our role really is? And I'm not saying that we can't be served, but what about serving? What about pleasing God? See, sometimes, let, let me ask you this. When's the last time you thought about what you were doing, whether it pleased God or not? Not whether it pleased you or not, whether it pleased God or not. It's all right, y'all. It's, 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 it's somber mode already. I can see here. It's okay. Teach us, teach us. So we're talking about First Thessalonians. When he spoke to him, he says, you received of us how you ought to walk and to please God. So you know how you ought to live and how you ought to please God. You know that. In other words, this is not a surprise. But it's something that people seem to put on the back burner. I mean, if you go up to your respective colleagues, friends, other believers, you say, well, are you pleasing God? It's like, what? What? Because, see, I, I am understanding, Minister Plummer, that there are sometimes some things that God going to require you to do to please him that he won't necessarily require me to do to please him. So the question is, are you pleasing God? Well, I don't know why we do that like that. No, 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 no. That ain't the question. Are you pleasing God? So let's talk about pleasing the king today. Amen. Number one, pleasing the king requires you and I to make certain decisions. Pleasing the king requires you and I to make certain decisions. Well, what, what do you mean? Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, New Living Translation. 
Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. New Living Translation. Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. We got to make some decisions. Whose approval are we trying to win? I I, got to decide some stuff here. Do I want to be popular? Want everybody to know my name? Or is it okay just to please God? Because it may not be the same route. Obviously, we got to make some decisions. Well, you know, I, I, uh, uh, uh. see, it starts to get tight because now, can I be honest with you? It involves our flesh. We like notoriety. We like being recognized. But sometimes God will have you do things in the back room. See, see, see you, you know, this, this I know we're in a digital age now, and some people won't, won't be able to relate to this, but some of y'all is at least, you know, a little younger than I am, can recall this. There was a time where photography meant that you took a picture, you had film that was developed. It's amazing, film was always developed in a dark room. The development, listen to this, the development happened in the dark. People like the instant pictures, though. Selfies don't happen in the dark. We have to understand whose approval are we trying to win? See, there's some things that need to be settled, some decisions that need to be made. Whose approval are we trying to win? Look at this. See, each of us got to make up our minds. What do we truly desire? Do we desire God's approval or do we desire people's approval? Joshua 24 and 15, you know the text. Joshua said, all right, y'all. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day who you going to serve. You got to make your decision. I got to make mine. He said, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites and whose land, you, you could choose all them other gods. Then he says, wait a minute. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, all of us, it's an individual decision. This is individual. We have to choose. And see, here's what happened. Because I brought you back to when you first met the king. All of us wanted to serve him, but over the course of time, it starts to look like you're not getting the recognition for serving him that you will by just getting the people's approval. So if you're not careful, you start leaning to doing things that only gets the people's approval. Wait a minute. Let me help you. I know you say I ain't doing nothing for people. Guess what you are? One of the people. In other words, you're doing it for your approval and not God's. See, I felt that right there. Somebody was trying to divorce themselves from all of the other people. I ain't doing nothing for people. You, you, you wanted the people. Joshua said, no, no, no. But that's for me and my house. See, do, do we still draw that line in the sand? I mean, do you still get up with that mentality, for God I live, for God I die? I remember, remember when you had that fire, that passion. I'm out to please God. I don't care what they think of me. Oh, oh, I am in the right place, right? We ain't make the wrong turn this morning, did we, huh? Okay. Pleasing the king is a matter of individual choice and who we going to serve. You got to draw your line in the sand. You got to do that. Second Timothy two and four, King James. The Bible says no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. 
In other words, there's a certain level of discipline, a certain level of focus necessary to please the king. I can't be in the corner on my cell phone with God. I, I, I need to be waiting and beckoning to see what he needs, what he wants. See, a, a, a good server is going to keep their eye on you. They're just waiting on an indication that there's something they need to do. See, I'm, I'm saying, you know, Lord, you, you know, are we like somebody ought to do something? Why don't you change your name to somebody? How many problems could we fix in the world if we just changed our name to somebody? Because we always say somebody ought to do something. Lord, if it's bothering you, let it bother me. Then we will understand the very heart of God, the very mind of God, and what we could do to please the king. Lord, if it's bothering you, let it bother me. See, when Paul is talking to his protege, Timothy, knowing that he's about to get off the scene, he says, listen, Timothy, when you're warring, when you're engaging in this warfare, well, what warfare? Pastor, this, this, this ain't the Gulf War. We ain't in Ukraine. Listen, let me tell you something. When you said, I accept Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, you are absolutely in warfare. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I ain't on the intercessory team. Listen, being on the intercessory team don't mean you ain't in war. Amen. Amen. One of the things that we need to understand is that this is an absolute war. And whether you know it or not, shots are being taken at you. Well, well, well you know, I ain't, I, ain't in the, I ain't no preacher. So what? Do you think everybody that's being bombed in Ukraine got a uniform on? Their country is at war. You are at war. So now the scripture, he tells us, when you are at war, don't entangle yourself with the affairs of this life. Don't get caught up in all of the stuff here. People, well, I'm going to protest this. I'm going to do that. Listen, before you protest anything, here's my suggestion. Read the Bible and see what's coming. You could be protesting what Jesus said was coming. See, some stuff we're doing because we don't like it. Folk will be hollering about climate change. Are you serious? Climate change? That's all a disguise. That's, that's all a deception. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? You don't think the, the earth really heating up? Yes, it's heating up. You know why? Sin. It's groaning. The earth is groaning. Read the scripture. He said this was going to happen. It's waiting on the manifestation of the sons of God. That's what's happening. And we, you're going to get out of talking about, we need to stop burning all these fossil fuels. Go and get you a horse and carriage then. Well, Pastor, no, I don't want a horse and carriage. I want me an electric vehicle. Well, no problem. Where do you think the batteries come from? You, you know how, many, how much carbon that's producing when we're creating the batteries? See, people don't even, I mean, it's, it's all, that's why I said, it's so deceptive. Look at your finger, how many diamonds you got on it. Where do you think them came from? What kind of carbon footprint did it take for that? See, but that, that, that kind of stuff we ain't going to do, we ain't going to talk about that. No. See, and, and this stuff is all setting us up. It's setting us up for what's coming. I, I, I ain't going to talk about that today. That's, that's another message. Just saying, as we, as we find ourselves uh, getting in place with what God is pleasing the king, not all of this other stuff. We can't get entangled in these other things. Amen. It says that he may please him who have chosen him. So what are we doing to please God? What are we doing? Lord, what do you really want from me, Lord? What do you really desire from me? 
I'm going to tell you the first thing is worship. I I'm going to just say this and need to be said. I, 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 don't, I don't understand. I, I feel like this. I can go to anybody's church, any color, any denomination, as long as you are honoring Jesus, I get with your praise and worship. I get with you. I can. I don't have a problem with that. But how is it that there are some saints that when it comes time to praise God, they not moving? But wait, wait, wait. You said, well, Pastor, I, I'm, I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> but the game, when the game come on, you look like that kind of person. Yeah. Talk about it. I, I mean, you, 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 you the one that's in the stands. Your, 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 your face is painted two different colors. Because you supporting your team. Come on. But you not that kind of person when it's time to worship. I'm saying, what about pleasing the king? See, let, let, let me ask you something. I was, uh, I was reflecting on, on, on uh, uh, Maurice's testimony that he shared with me that I just heard. Maybe the rest of y'all had known already. But I was just reflecting. I said, what is it like? Because I know what it's like to lay in the bed and not be able to get up. And I was thinking about people who, when something happens to them, they have the audacity to say, God, just one more time, raise me up. I'll do better from now on. I don't want to ever have to say that. Because I want to be doing the best I can all along. Every fiber of my energy. Every bit of, of, of inertia I have, I want to put it into what I'm doing. Yes. Every time I remember what it was like when I couldn't raise my hands. So I make it a point to raise it. I don't need you to tell me to raise it. So I know what it was like when I couldn't raise it. See, what about pleasing the king? What about that now? What about you losing, uh, losing you in him? I know you're dignified on your job and they look at you and they're like, well, you know, she's so-and-so. He's so-and-so. That's fine. But you know, I, last time I read, there's a point in the Bible where it says that everybody took their crown and threw it down. What did they want nobody? Because they had crowns. But when they found him who is greater than they are. Oh, here's my crown right now. See, do we still see the king as being great? Or has the spirit of the world crept in? Let, let, let's, let's keep moving here. John chapter 8, verse 29. Oh, I got to go. John 8 and 29, and he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Jesus said, I always do what pleases my Father. Jesus is our example, and he always did what pleased the Father. He was always conscious of pleasing the Father. How conscious are we of pleasing God? You get up and you get ready to go to work. I understand. I get it. Go to work. By all means, man, don't work. You don't eat. But now how conscious are you of pleasing God in your work? If your boss ain't there, will you still work? I mean, no, 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 no. As unto the Lord. See what I'm saying? There's a consciousness. I don't care what the occupation is. Will you work as unto the Lord? Amen. I used to wonder, I said, why do they have supervisors? Why? Why do they have managers? People can't do it themselves. You need to be supervised. 
You need, oh, well, you need somebody to sit there at the clock to tell you what time to come in. Somebody tell you when to go. Somebody tell, break time is over. Do we really need that? You're right for some people. I said, God, help us. Because it's some of the saints. But we're supposed to be working as unto the Lord. You should be the best worker on your job. Nobody should outwork you. That, I ain't saying you got to be there all day and all night. I'm saying when you're there, you need to be there. You should be engaged in what he called you to do. Why? Because you're giving God glory. You're pleasing him because you work. Listen, work was before the fall. Don't be acting like work is sin. I hate work. That's why people walk around, I'm, I'm going to retire and do what? And do what? I'm still looking for retirement in the Bible. Because you, are, you and I are supposed to work the works of him that sent us. For night cometh when no man can work. Well, pastor, you said I, I should never retire. No, I ain't saying that you got to stay at that job forever. <laughs> By no means am I saying that. But just because you're not on a job don't mean you're not working. You're always working in the kingdom. Yes. Or at least, I'm sorry, you should always be working in the kingdom. Yes. Don't, let the, don't, don't let what the world is saying. Everybody ain't out of the Dominican Republic somewhere sipping margaritas talking about, you know, praise the Lord, I'm retired now. <laughs> that ain't real life, you all. What would you do if money was not needed. You didn't need no money. You just found your retirement. See, you, see, see that you are working to make a living. Now, reality is, I know you might not like this, but you work to learn. When you ain't learning no more, That's why you need to find something that's always challenging. Something that's always going to contribute to your, your growth and development. Ain't that wrong with a career change? I ain't growing no more here. This, I'm not being developed anymore here. I need something. Else. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, Pastor, I thought you were supposed to stay on the job forever. Why? You do know when they look at your resume, they look at experience. Experience. That means you learn something. So when you're not having any more experiences, nothing wrong with finding somewhere else. Finding something else. Boy, I'm helping somebody right now. I'm helping somebody right now because they were sitting here thinking, Lord, should I leave or should I stay? But you know what's wrong here? Oh, Holy Spirit. Okay, okay. Here's the issue. And I know we're talking about pleasing the king. Here's the issue. This is something that happens to us. We become comfortable, and listen to this. Comfort, what happens when you get comfortable is you get afraid of becoming uncomfortable. So you mean to tell me I got to go over here? What if that don't work? What if what? So now you're saying, see, everything else was comfortable. I, I knew where the bathroom was. I liked the little window I had. I knew everybody. So you was comfortable. I was at, quick story, I was at a job one time and was working and they were talking about, oh, the economy is terrible. It ain't no jobs out there. It ain't, ah, oh, ain't nobody paying no money. Ah, oh. listen, let me tell you something. I have enough faith to believe God for one job. Amen. Always. I just feel like this. Out of all the job possibilities out there, I only need one. I only need one. I met my, my, my wife was at home at the time with, we, with, the, with the kids. So I was like, man, no jobs out there. And I told them, I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. They couldn't believe I was quitting. Man, they, you listen to me, what you going to do? 
I'm going to get a job. That's what I'm going to do. And you know what you're going to do? Stay here and keep doing what you've been doing. I got a job paying more money, better benefits. Every, I mean, it was dream job. So I had to believe God for one. I ain't believe in God for everybody that's unemployed. I'm not. That ain't. The, I was looking for a job to take care of me and my family. You have to not be afraid of becoming uncomfortable. Some of the, I, I met some wonderful people, great people on the, on, people I didn't even know I met them because I decided to make a change. Because where I was at wasn't growing or developing anymore. As a matter of fact, they were looking, about, looking at me doing an entry level position again after 12 years. But I could have stayed and said, I'm comfortable. I'm comfortable. After all the salary is this, that, and the other. My new salary was better. <laughs> Just thought I'd put that out there. Don't be afraid of becoming uncomfortable. Please, God. That's a word for somebody. Please, God. All right, Holy Spirit, I'm going to share something with you. When's the last time you used your faith? Hebrews 11 and 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Not just your saving faith. Where is your faith? What do you believe in God for now? I'm all off my notes now. What do you believe in God for? How are you exercise? The Bible says uh, uh, bodily exercise profiteth little. How are you exercising your faith, though? Well, I'm just saved. Okay, no problem. Being saved is wonderful. That's saving faith. But now let's talk about living faith. For the just shall live by faith. So now how are you exercising your faith? What do you believe in God for? What are you stretched over? What's God opening up? So you want to talk about pleasing him? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. What are you stretching yourself so that you're uncomfortable? Well, you said, God, if you don't come through, this is it. Where's that at? Where's that at? I'm th- now, 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 wait a minute. I'm talking about biblically now. I ain't talking about no crazy mess now. You know, God told me to, to go, you know, well, I, I feel led to go to Ukraine and stand up in the middle of everything and say, stop. All right. We'll see you later. I'm talking about biblically what God spoke to your heart. You can't shake it. It's the thing that you cannot shake. You cannot put it away. Soon as you feel like, okay, oof, man, that wasn't God. You cut the TV on, bam, the commercial says it. Oh, God, God will do this to you. You read in an article, and it's a word to jump out on the page. That's the same thing he said to you. Because now you can't shake this. Everywhere you look, you see it. Everywhere you turn, you hear it. Because use your faith now. With men, these things are impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Lord, this is too big. I I don't know if I could do it. You can't. Let me just help you. But with God, all things are possible. You ain't in this by yourself. See, I'm talking about pleasing him now. Pleasing him is going to stretch us. See, you got to be uncomfortable. Got to be stretched. See, for some of us, we don't got so comfortable. We don't do nothing. We got routine. Your routine is boring. You don't even like it. Here we go. All right. Get up and go do this. No, you, no, no. You, you have nothing challenging, nothing requiring anything. How long are you going to live like that? 
just go on to this job. No, no, you, it ain't the job. Holy Spirit, okay. Y'all, this message is, is different today. I'm just, it's just, 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 listen, there's, there's individuals that are under the sound of my voice. You are wrestling. What you're wrestling with is you are, you are at a point where right now, this was comfortable, but God said, come here. And you are afraid to come here because you ain't been there before. You don't know what that, so you wrestling, should I go, should I stay? Should I go, should I stay? How long halt you between two opinions? A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You got to commit. You got to commit. Lord, here I am. I'm all in. You've done this before in your life. Your life is full of histories that God has wrote his story in. But now you have found yourself comfortable. But I want to remind you where you are comfortable at was a place that you were once uncomfortable. You once didn't know if you could make it where you are now. I don't know about this. I don't know. But now it's been long enough. God's calling you. He's beckoning you to step out some more. He's beckoning you to do more. Mm. I just saw somebody and it just, it just resonated, but I'm trying not to. The, he's beckoning you to do more. The uncomfortable feeling is because God is saying, come on. Come on. See, we, 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 can't, we can't be like Peter watching Jesus on the water and all of a sudden we say, bid me come. And we go, no, I don't want to go. I don't know. She's going to have to step out. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. Because you Notice why that scripture says that. Because you know when you're wrestling with it? In your mind. You know yourself, I've not exhausted everything. I've not done everything that he said for me to do. You feel it. You sh you, people are talking to you and you're hearing them, but you're not listening. Because what's happening on the inside? They say, how you doing? Fine. Because on the inside, it's, it's stuff going on. Turmoil. I'm trying to figure this out. Trying to put my finger on it. Leave me alone. You, I mean, you, you, you're irritable with folks. You, 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 just, not that you're mad at them. I, I got something going on. I'm trying to, trying to put my finger on it, trying to get fixated on what's happening with me. It's because God's saying, come on. And where you are is no longer comfortable. That was the place you were called to at that time. You are, you are now facing a Kairos moment. Not a chronos, a kairos. Chronos is the way we time a calendar, what time it is on, on our watches. That's all chronos. Kairos is a God moment. In the fullness of time, it's kairos. God's calling you in the fullness of his time. Things now are not like they used to be. You must move with an urgency. Your movement is connected to so many other things. It relates to so many other people. You can't just sit there. You can't just sit there. Use your faith. Use your faith. Don't let that muscle get out of shape. Use your faith. We got to develop it. Lord, what are you saying? That's what you want. Okay, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Not worrying about, what, what, watch this, well, what if I lose it? Listen, let me help you. The day and time is coming where people are going to lose stuff. Lose stuff. But the Bible says in, in, in uh, Hebrews, he said they took the spoiling of their goods like it wasn't a problem. I don't want to ever get to the point where the stuff I have has me. Amen. 
See, it's easy to say that, but I, 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 I try to honestly keep stuff at arm's length. I like things. Don't get me wrong. I don't want you sitting, well, Pastor, he don't want that. Yes, I do. And if I start telling you, you'll be like, wow, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> but I never want to. See, because in the back of my mind, Dora, I always say this. It's all going to burn. It's just whether your fire is going to be bigger than mine. It's all going to burn. So as pretty as it is, as nice as it is, poof, burn. So it keeps me from being attached too much. When the last time you gave away something that you like? No, I, no, no. I didn't say something you didn't want. No, 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 no. Something you like. You bought it. You was like, ah, oh, I can't wait, boy. Then when they see me in this, mm, the Holy Ghost said, give it away. You like that ain't the Lord. <laughs> that ain't him. See, let, let me. I, I'm just y'all. I'm just being honest. I'm I'm putting you in places where you start seeing it was the Holy Ghost talking to you. For the last, I I, I try to. I don't even remember to to ask about offerings. That's not on my mind. But I'm, I guarantee you, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to people about sowing. He does. He does. Because I decided, Lord, I'm not going to worry about this. We got folks out saying, don't do this and don't do that and all of that. Listen, you love God, show me. You love God, show him. What about pleasing God? I'm not here to police people. I'm here to pastor people. If you want to be police, the station is up the street. We've got to get to the place that we're learning to become mature believers, listening to the spirit of God. When's the Lord? You, you, know, you, you know how we do what, you know, I got, got my offer here. What happened when God said, you know, I want you to get this. Let me, let me tell you what's. Look, mark my words. I'm gonna put this on. I'm gonna put this on camera. Somebody online is going to sow a major seed into redeeming love, and I don't even know who it is. Have no idea, because I believe God is raising up people who will hear His voice and will obey His voice. What I don't want to be is the person that misses what God said. Because I was too afraid to move. Amen. Amen. Too afraid. Somebody is going to obey. Now, I'm not just talking about that, 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 it's, it's, this is bigger than money. I'm talking about, he, he said, he said, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I'm saying, how are we using our faith anymore? Jesus said, you could speak to this tree. Speak to this mountain. What are we speaking to? Using our faith, what are we speaking to? He said, you can speak to this mountain and tell it to be cast into the sea, and it would obey. But see, if we keep walking around and staying with people who don't believe, then we're going to stay comfortable. Why don't we see more miracles? Why? He says, these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. See, instead of saying like, God, why aren't you doing this? He says, them that believe. Could it be that them that believe are not believing? So God, I don't want to become so comfortable. See, see now it's comfortable because we can go to the doctor. But you know, it wasn't always like that. I grew up in the, where I was originally born at, wasn't no doctor. The doctor, you had to go into the, you had to go into town to get to the doctor. Wasn't no just, oh, well, you know what, my appointment next month. No, wasn't no, uh-uh. And I seen how my grandmother and them, how they knew how to pray and believe God for stuff. I mean, stuff. 
what we take. See, right now, you could just call Alexa for stuff. You know, she cuts your lights on, got the right temperature when you get there. You, you, you know, that's all we got to do. I don't want to miss believing God. I don't want to miss trusting him. I try to listen for opportunities when God says something to me. You know, and I'm, I'm just, I, I know, you, I, I hope you're not taking this wrong, but oftentimes it's money because that's something we're so connected to. You'll say, well, I'm going to give 20. He said, give 50. And you're like, man, that's $30. I was going to do that. So now $30 is enough to keep you comfortable. You'll be walking around and the Lord say something, you know, give them so-and-so. You're like, I ain't giving them that. So just whatever that was. See, I don't, I don't want to miss that. There was a time when we lived for that. We were, oh, we just want, not, it wasn't, the point was God was speaking to me and I know when I do this, it pleases him. So you were walking around like, I pleased God. I pleased God. I pleased, no matter what it was, I, I just, I know I pleased him. You know what happens now? Men become lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. The Bible speaks of men pleasers. I don't want to please men more than I, and see, I'm, I'm a man. I don't want to please me more than I'm pleasing God. What about when the Lord says, listen, I, I need you to get up. I, I want to talk with you. Lord, it's 2.30. You know I got to be to work tomorrow. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Who did you pray to to get that job again? I, I just, you know, help, help me out. Who did you ask to bless you with that job again? See, I'm talking about pleasing the king. Where your life. Ooh, okay. If you have something that God does not have access to, you have an idol. We must have, he's, see, no, notice this. So I, I, you, you may not like what I'm saying, but I got more Bible to prove what I'm saying than you do to sit there just being uncomfortable. We were called to be stewards. Moreover, it's required of a steward that he be found faithful. We're called to be stewards of the resources that God has given us. We often put things above and say, well, no, this belongs to me. I'll give God out of this. Not that God asks for everything, but we have to always make sure it is available. Amen. Your time, whose time is it really? So I'm going to tell you something. One of, the, one of the blessings of being sick, and I know that may seem like an oxymoron to you. One of the blessings of being sick is you realize what time really is. You realize that, okay, you know what, this, all this stuff that I thought was important, it ain't important. Like, did you see that, did, did you see that movie on Netflix? No, I was sick. <laughs> when you start thinking of stuff like, man, I, I wish I could get up and just sit out and see the sun come up. I, I, I just, just, what was it like to be able to just sit there and eat an ice cream cone? See, now all of a sudden you realize who time it really is. Back to pleasing God. See, I, when I close my eyes for that last time, I want to know I pleased him. One of the reasons people are scared to die, they ain't done what they're supposed to do. They know inherently they've not done what they were supposed to do, so they fear dying. Paul said, I finished my course. I kept the faith. See, I'm ready to get out of here. How can you live like that unless you're pleasing the king? Consciously pleasing the king day in and day out. There's businesses in here that God is challenging you to raise up. That's bigger than anything you've ever done. Listen, I, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to share it with you just like this. It has nothing to do with your education. 
You can sit up here and well, well, you know, I need. No, no, no. Kairos. Kairos. It's time. I'm talking about what God spoke to you when you were young. What he said to you, you put on the back burner. You thought it would never come to pass. There was no way. This can't be me. Lord, uh, that, that couldn't have been me. Yes, it was. Kairos. Kairos. That's why I told Habakkuk in the midst of all that was going on, he said, write the vision. Habakkuk said, well, you know what? I'm going to go up here. I'm going to go up on my watchtower. I'm going to sit up here and wait and see what the Lord is going to say about all of this stuff that's going on. He said, I, okay, this is my answer. Write the vision. I need you to make it plain. So when the messenger does get it, they'll know how to run with it. What happens is we get the vision and what we try to do is run then. The vision comes, but then there's still time. He says, though it tarry, wait for it. See, we, 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 don't, we don't even go to that part of the scripture. Though it tarry, it ain't, it ain't for right now. If you read Habakkuk, he said, this is for future events. It's going to transpire in the future. I need you to write it because it's going to happen later on. I'm telling you now, but it's going to happen later. And we said, well, it didn't happen now, so I'm going to just put it on the back burner. That must not be God. Oh, yes, it is. He's going to stir you. I see some of you all, he's speaking to you in dreams. You, you, you need to put, I'm going to tell you, put your tablet next to you. Because it's Kairos time. It's time to please the king. You're going to have to step out. You're going to have to step out. Well, Pastor, I don't know how, to, I don't know either. God does. I don't know how I was going to be a pastor either. Wasn't trying to do this. Was not trying to do this. <laughs> Kairos. But can I tell you, I was about 15 years old, not saved. I see it right now. Me going up my stairs back at my old house. He said, you're going to lead many. Unsaved. Unsaved. I'm like, what does that mean? Write the vision. That was then. I wasn't trying to pass. I didn't know what that meant. What my point is, when God shares something with you, don't try to figure it all out. It ain't about us knowing up here. It's about us trusting in here. God, you've got this. Can God come to you and say, listen, I need you to leave your family. I need you to go to a place that I called you to go to, but I ain't going to tell you what the place is until you go. That's what he told Abraham. And oh yeah, I need you to do it when you're old. When you set in your ways. When you comfortable. Will you trust me now to do what I called you to do? Will you still seek to please me now? And Abraham did. Stepped out not knowing where he was going and became the father of many nations. So what does God want to make you? What does he want to make you simply because you said, Lord, I want to please you? See, the Bible says that we are co-laborers with God. Do you realize God want to work with you? I didn't say he wants you to work for him. He want to work with you. Co-laborers. The Holy, the Holy Spirit is the paracletos, the comforter, the one who comes alongside with strength. He comes alongside. He want to work with us. Are y'all... Are, <laughs> this is a moment that I believe God is directing us to understand the importance of the time that we find ourselves in. It's about pleasing him. And if we please him, Proverbs, I think 16 and 27, 
if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but it says, when a, ways, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with it. That's, that was the wrong one, but that, what I just gave you is the right scripture. It's in Proverbs 16 somewhere. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. You know what that means? Watch this. It ain't about getting rid of our enemies. It's about pleasing God. We're so concerned about who don't like us, who mad at us, who hating on us. Everybody went, whoa, yeah. the haters will hate. Listen, how about pleasers will please? I ain't worried about who hating. Can I just please God? Because if I can please him, he'll make even my enemies. He's going to make them jokers behave. I ain't got to get rid of them. I ain't, oh, oh what, what, about, what about the people? People are always working in. We want to talk all of that stuff. Who's talking about pleasing God? When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Can you imagine your enemy sit down and, I don't like you, but I, don't, I can't stand you, but even they at peace with you. Why? Because you pleasing God. Proverbs 16 and 7. I was only 20 scriptures away. <laughs> but I, I mean, when you realize this is what the Lord is saying, you all, please him. Get lost in pleasing him. Get lost in pleasing God. Spend your time with a conscious effort to please God. Lord, I want to please you today. In everything I do, everything I say, Lord, everything I think, I want to please you. Yeah. I want to please you when I interact with, with, with my spouse, when I interact with others. I want to please you. Yes. God, I want to treat everybody right because it pleases you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. See, your, what, what's the motivation now? I want to serve, Lord, because it pleases you. Yes. Everything you're doing now is because I want to please him. Yes. See, the, see, see how that changes the whole narrative now? Because I'm absorbed in pleasing God. I can't explain it. Well, why are you doing that over there? What do you mean, God? You, you, you. Well, I felt that the Lord told me to, to go over this way, and I seen such and such, and I stopped there, and I started just sharing with him. But see, what was my motivation? It was to please God. See, we, we've gotten away from, from, that's why, as I notice, I'm looking in, in society one of the jobs or the job industries that people are quitting in, a high, <laughs> watch this. I'm going to show you a parallel. One of the industries that people are, have a high turnover rate, high, they're just quitting, is the service industry. Light coming on, ain't it? <laughs> yep, you see, bling, 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 bling. People don't want to serve anymore. Look at us in the house of God. People don't want to serve anymore. We, we have forgotten. I was talking with a, with a pastor the other day. We have forgotten as pastors to remind people about serving. Do you really think that everything we do here is simply because of one or two people. People that are willing to serve because it ain't for pay. The Smiths clean up the building with other people. But it ain't for pay. But now we could hire a wonderful janitorial service. My point is, you all, if you look at everything that's done in church to make sure that you have the environment that's conducive to you coming in here, worshiping God, free from all of these distractions, it's not done by one or two people. And it's not done by people who are paid. And it's, watch, I'm going to say this word. It's not done by volunteers. 
It's done by people who serve. Our musicians, our worship team, practicing, rehearsing, trying, uh, week in, week out. See, this ain't about, well, you know what? I want to make sure that I sound real good. Yeah, okay, for who? See, when we understand that everything you're doing you, you got you to gotta make the correlation between the two. You got to make the connection because people are sitting at home not doing anything because they've not made the connection. Mm. Right. Amen. They don't understand that this is service. Right. Yes. So one of the things, I, the, the other day, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap up. The other day I was, I was thinking about this. What's wrong with, one of the problems we're having now in the church, I believe, is um, vocabulary. Yeah, vocabulary. For instance, in 2020, we had a pandemic. But the Bible calls it a pestilence. So what, what, what do you mean, Pastor? We get caught up on the vocabulary of things. Okay, right now, people are doing... Uh, different things that they say is okay, but God call it sin. It's vocabulary. And the vocabulary is enough to mask the deception where people accept things that God doesn't accept. So consequently, when it comes to serving in the house of God, if we say, well, could, could you... Uh, uh, could you run, run the, uh, I remember when I, I went to Jackie, and I said, Jackie, uh, I, 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 we need some help back with the, vid- with the video, I mean, with the uh, screen. And it wasn't, that, Jackie, you got a degree in screenology? No. <laughs> she said, okay. Amen. And been there ever since. Her and Glenette both. <laughs> but that's, Serving. It ain't about, well, you know, I don't do that. But what do you do? See, serving isn't saying I'm waiting for my niche. It's whatever's needed. Because after all, I'm a servant. And when we learn that, that's pleasing the king. Because God knows why you're doing what you're doing. He knows that you're saying, I'm just happy to be in the kingdom. Whatever I can do for the king, I am grateful to do it. (laughs) Do you know what the church would look like if everybody would take that mentality and run with it? What couldn't we do? What couldn't we do? I just want to serve. Well, and and so you don't, one thing about a servant you don't serve when you want to. If your glass is empty, you want them to come over there and fill it up now. Okay, just, just a minute. I'll be over there. I, I got something I got to do. You're like, oh, no, you didn't. My, my glass. I'm coming. See, that you like, I ain't, I ain't ever coming back here. You know, watch this. Oh, my Holy, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Watch this. Do you know you can have a restaurant that serves a wonderful meal Great ambiance, but a horrible server. And it would, watch this, the servant messes up your experience. I'll wait till the light come on. It's the servant that messes up the experience. Not that everything else wasn't prepared, but that servant. Their attitude, how they brought things, how they didn't respond, All of that. But what if that servant was in tune with pleasing? I'm just, that's my, that's my job. That's why I'm here. I'm going to please. You ever had a good server? Watch this. And you say, I'm going back there. I'm preaching better than you saying amen. The servant will cause you to literally look beyond a lot of the other issues because you've seen how well they serve. What about us? 
Can people look beyond some of the issues that we have in church? Because our service to the king is so good. If today was your last day, your last day, did you please the king? Now that we, we ain't evaluating nobody else. This is self-evaluation. You and the king. If today was your last day, you were going to draw your last breath. Did you please the king? If not, it's a wonderful time for you to repent and to bring forth fruit worthy of repentance. Say, Lord, I understand now. Whatever my hands find to do, I'm going to do it because I'm about pleasing you. I'm not waiting to be told. I'm looking for the opportunity. We should, we should have so many people rushing to serve that you have to set people down. Because I, I want to serve. I want to serve whatever I can do. And I'm not looking for anything in return. Amen. And then to be, here's the kicker though, like I said earlier, be willing to serve even when it's not convenient. Amen. Sometimes it's not going to be convenient. It's not going to be when you want it and how you want it. God's going to call on you on some times where you're going to have to say, flesh, shut up, and let's go. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you ain't been there, just hold on. Late Bishop Lockett used to call us and say, what you doing? I said, Nothing. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. What do you need? Because when you're called on, see, this, this is what people, I, I'm doing. I just feel like this. What's more important than kingdom work? Help me. What's more important than kingdom work? That's why nothing should ever separate us from doing what God's called us to do. Well, you know, I ain't feeling good in my body. Listen, tell your flesh, get up and get right. You got something to do. Your flesh doesn't control you. You control it. The only time your flesh really wants to be in agreement with you is when something is wrong with it so it can get right. Oh, your flesh will help you pray when, it's, when something is wrong. It'll say, let's go pray. But now when, it won't, when everything's right, it want to do its thing. Y'all, 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 you act like you're, it's not a lie. It is. That's why he says mortify, put to death, because it's still alive. And it's trying to run the show. My spirit is running the show, not this. My outward man is perishing every day. But not my inner man. I'm finished, y'all. I, I don't, I'm finished. Just please the king. Please the king. Be willing to be made uncomfortable to please the king. You won't regret it. You won't regret it. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I just pray now for us, your people, Lord. I, I pray that you would grip our hearts with the time that we're in, Lord. So many people are occupied with so many things. But I pray, Lord, that our our day would slow down. God, for a moment, it's like the merry-go-round is going on and we're saying, Lord, slow it down so we can get off. We're being inundated with so many different things that are thrown at us at seemingly the same time. Lord, you gave us peace. Not peace like the world gives us, but your peace have you given to us. God, I pray for those that are under the sound of my voice today who need to experience your peace again. God, who may have been entrapped with the things of this world and found themselves entangled and fighting with so much stuff and Lord, they don't know what to do now. They feel like there's no way out. But Jesus, you are the way. You're not a way, you are the way. I pray, Father, manifest to them the way of escape that you have made. No temptation has taken us, but such is common unto man. And with the temptation, you will also make a way of escape 
So Lord, make the way known to those who are right now dealing with these issues and being bombarded with so many things. God, I pray for that person now that seems like there's decisions that they have to make. They're trying to figure out which, what's right. Should I go here? Should I go there? I pray, Father, first and foremost, calm them. Calm them now. Let them know the peace of God that passes all understanding. And Lord, I pray that they would thank you, Father. Trust in the Lord with all their heart and lean not to their own understanding. Lord, now open the door that no man can shut. And God, close all of those other doors so that no man can open them. That they would see that you have indeed made a way for them. And may they give glory and honor to you. Because you're the one who's done this. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. May they recognize that you have intervened on their behalf and give you the glory and the honor that's due your name. And Father, I pray that they will learn that they can trust you even when they can't see you. Lord, I thank you in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, Thank you for taking the opportunity to tune in with us on today. I believe it's a tremendous blessing to be able to hear and receive from the Word of God. I want to take an opportunity also to challenge you as you move further in not just hearing, but obeying the Word of God. The Bible speaks in Romans of the fact that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. However, it doesn't stop there. It also lets us know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And then it leads us further to let us know that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. I want to give you an opportunity to meet the Savior today. An opportunity to meet Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The one who died for our sins, who was buried, and who was raised again from the dead. Today, you can know him personally. I want you to take this opportunity to pray with me. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. I know that you are the son of the living God. And I believe that you gave your life for me. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I thank you now for saving me. Amen and amen. Listen, if you've prayed that prayer, you've just accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You are now part of the family of God. Your life has been changed forever. I want to encourage you now to be a part of a Bible-believing church, somewhere where you can be fed the Word of God. The Bible says man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It's important that you're hearing from God. It's important that you're growing in God's grace. I want to encourage you, find a place that you can connect with other like-minded believers and grow in the things of God. It will make all the difference in your new life as you live as unto the Lord. I also want to encourage those that may be watching now, and maybe you're already saved, maybe you're already part of a, a, a church, and you're just wanting to find somewhere where you can continue to grow in the things of God and add or supplement your faith. Thank you for taking this opportunity and allowing us to be a part of that supplement. Also, I want to say this. Some of you all may be watching and you say, well, how can I give to that ministry? How can I sow into that ministry? Well, listen, I want to encourage you to take the opportunity. We have an app that you can actually uh, download to your phone and you can give to this ministry at any time that you want to, or feel free to go to our website. You can go to our website and on our website, you will find uh, an opportunity to donate. There's a donate button, click on that button and it will further direct you into being able to give into this ministry. Listen, I believe that giving is a gain and not a loss. Jesus says it's more blessed to give than to receive. The Bible lets us know that he increases the fruits of our righteousness. When we give, the Bible lets us know that he causes us to increase. He increases the fruits of our righteousness. It's all because God has allowed us to partake in the work that he is doing in the earth. And that is giving. 
That is giving of his son unto us. So when we give, we have an opportunity to imitate what God has been doing for us all along. Because it wasn't that we deserved it. It was that God was so good that he was giving his own son on our behalf. I pray that the message has been a blessing to you. And I encourage you to come out, be a part of what we're doing. We're located at 740 North Main Street here in High Point, North Carolina. Feel free to join us every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. or every Wednesday evening at 7.20 p.m. God bless you and thank you again for being with us. God bless.